Hello students, let us study about mixed method research. Researchers were doing researches with different approaches, but they were not very happy by using one approach and there were problems interpreting the data and that is why somehow they started by combining the research methods or mixing the research methods. But this term mix method was not used right from the beginning. So, let us see how the term was evolved. Campbell and Fisk, they used the term multi trade or multi method research because more than one methods were used. Steckler and McElroy, they used integrated or combined research because the two approaches were integrated or combined. Fielding and fielding, they used just the simple term quantitative and qualitative methods, but it was too long. Regan and Nagel and White, they used the term hybrid. Creswell used combined research and Moss used the term methodological triangulation. But handbook of mixed method in social and behavioral research, mixed method research was the term finalized and used. Now, what is mixed method research? Let us study the characteristics of mixed method research. In mixed method, there is collection and analysis of quantitative as well as qualitative data. That means, the researchers solve the problem by using numbers or numerical data we can say and words both or we can say textual data. Researchers combine both the type of thinking that is inductive thinking and deductive thinking. Inductive thinking we all are aware about that different examples or in terms of research we can say different observations are used and then the researcher comes to the conclusion. Usually this procedure is done in qualitative studies, but in quantitative researchers used deductive method or deductive thinking. That means, he hypothesized first, that is that hypothesis is based on some theory and then the study is conducted, he collects data and sees whether the obtained results match with what was hypothesized or not. The researcher has to use different skills that is observing people, recording behavior, etc., etc. Now, mixed method research, it encourages to collaborate across sometimes adversarial quantitative and qualitative researchers because some researchers are insisting on using purely quantitative or purely qualitative research. But in mixed methods, collaboration of both the approaches is insisted. Now, what is the advantage? It provides strengths by balancing the weaknesses of both the researches. In quantitative, we use numerical data, but we do not know the context or rather we do not take into consideration the context. Whereas, in qualitative, we go by words, images, observations, but we do not have concrete numerical data. So, both the approaches are weak in some aspect, but mixed method research provides strengths by balancing the weaknesses of both the researches. Now, you must be wondering why to use mixed method research. Let us see when is it desirable to use mixed method research. When the researcher is approaching a subject from different perspective or paradigms to gain a holistic perspective. Besides that, to get a clearer picture of the social world and make for more adequate explanations. For example, sometimes there are certain views, there are certain approaches in the social world 
and we need more than one explanations. So that is possible when we combine both the researches. Besides that, it gives us opportunity as we have seen earlier to combine methodologies to solve a particular problem. We are going to study what type of problems are suitable for mixed method research after this. And besides that, multi-methodology fits well with postmodernism. Now let us see example of mixed method research. I have taken one example from education. A researcher wanted to study effect of specially prepared learning material on development of or enhancement of vocabulary of hearing impaired students. Now you all know that hearing impaired students they cannot hear and that is why their vocabulary is suffered a lot. Now how to increase this and whether there is really increase or not by giving the special training. Now this was a peculiar problem and merely quantitative or qualitative data was not sufficient and that is why the researcher he decided to employ both the methods or combine both the methods. Now what were the quantitative aspects of the study? Whether the vocabulary is really increased or not? Suppose in the beginning or before the training program the vocabulary was 2500 words. Then after going through the intervention whether it is really increased. So that was to be decided or measured. Then another problem is whether the increase is statistically significant. So that was also another problem and for this the data used was the data was obtained from different sources. So the scores on standardized test they were collected. There is a standardized test prepared specially prepared by Ali Avarjang Institute. So that was administered and the scores were used. Besides that there were several worksheets used in the intervention program and each worksheet was scored. So whether there was slight increase with every training aspect. So that was also measured. Besides that the students, the hearing impaired students were asked to interact with the teacher. There was continuous interaction between the teacher and the taught. So what words the students were using? So that count of words that was also measured. Now besides this there was qualitative aspect of study. Even if the study was conducted on 8 different hearing impaired students, there was not uniform increase in all the students. So naturally the researcher wanted to know why certain students benefited most and why others did not benefit to that extent. Then does increase in vocabulary depend on hearing loss? Does it depend on home background? Does it have any connection with characteristics of the personality of those hearing impaired students? And for this different qualitative tools were used. For example, detailed case study was used. There were interviews with parents, how the students are behaving in their home. What were the reasons for hearing loss? What are the characteristics of personality? Because instead of school, the personality can be studied in the home and that is why the parents were interviewed. Then besides that, the detailed observations of the students were done in the classroom by video recording and then the tra detailed transcriptions were done. How the student is responding to certain questions, which specific terms or words are increased for each child. So all these qualitative aspects were also included. A strong mixed method study should start 
with mixed method research questions and the hypothesis too. For example, if the study begins with quantitative phase, the investigator might introduce hypothesis and later in the study, when the qualitative phase is addressed, the qualitative research question appear. Now, there must be certain questions in your minds as researchers. How the report writing is done if we really use mixed method research? Yes, of course, when we are using both the type of methods and both the type of data, then it should reflect in our report writing too. The report naturally should include objectives for both the methods. That means, in objectives, you should include objective regarding quantitative methods and qualitative methods. Then you can have both, that is hypothesis for quantitative method and research questions are usually posed for qualitative studies. So, in the report, you have to mention both and of course, the type of data, numerical as well as textual. So, you can have separate chapters or you can divide your chapter of analysis of data into sections that you can decide later, but it definitely should include both the type of data and analyze both the type of data in your study. So, while analyzing the data, numerical data will be dealt with statistical methods. It may be t-test or chi-square, maybe you will just use percentages, correlation, whatever it is, depending upon the data you are using and depending upon the purpose of the study. But the qualitative data that is not to be analyzed statistically, there are different methods, you are going to do coding etcetera, etcetera, that you will learn later when you are learning about qualitative data analysis. But remember, you have to use both the type of analysis of data. Then while interpreting the results, you have to take into consideration analysis of both, that is quantitative and qualitative data analysis and especially your conclusions, they should be based on both the findings. So, what findings you have obtained from quantitative data and what interpretations you have done regarding qualitative data. Let us go back to our researcher who used both the type of data on hearing impaired students. So, the vocabulary whether it, there is statistically significant increase or not, for that she used t-test. Besides that, the, she had observed and counted many words. So, percentage was used to study the increase in the vocabulary. So, that was quantitative part, but besides that, she had interviewed the parents, she had actually done the observations, change in behavior that was video recorded. So, that was coded and how many times a particular student gives response to a particular word that was studied. Besides that, there were several sets of worksheets. So, which student is interested in which particular aspect of intervention? So, some students were very much interested in the set of festivals, whereas some were very much interested on the sets of sports. 
So that was again linked with the personality characteristics which they obtained from detailed interviews of parents. So thus while concluding the researcher used both the type of data and interpreted and concluded accordingly. As there are advantages, there are certain limitations of mixed method and while using mixed method research, we must be very much aware about those limitations. Now mixed method research requires expertise in both methods. So, as researcher, you must be very good at analyzing the data, collecting the numerical data, etc. But at the same time, you must practice how to interview, how to do detailed observations, how to interpret qualitative data and that is why the researcher needs to have expertise in both the methods. Then usually in any one type of research, limited data is there, but here the researcher is using both the type of data and that is why it is extensive data and sometimes it becomes unmanageable. The researcher does not know how to combine both the type of data. So that is another limitation. Then sometimes it is popular to claim that we are using mixed method, but one method is used just superficially. For example, a questionnaire is there and most of the questions are yes, no type or it is combining with the rating scale which gives us naturally quantitative data and a very few questions are open ended questions, but the researcher claims that I am using both the type of methods. So that again becomes a limitation. Thank you so much.